Hey guys, in this video we're going to be graphing piecewise functions. This video corresponds to the Delta Math Assignment Graphing Piecewise Functions Level 1. Alright, let's get started and let's get rid of these guys that have somehow found their way up there. Okay, so graphing piecewise functions. This is basically saying, hey, I have a couple of different functions and I want to invoke them on a couple of different spaces. So this is saying I want to invoke the function negative 6 but only between the space of negative 6 and 0. So this is a constant function which means it's just going to be a horizontal line so this guy is not bad. So on the left side of the function we will have the point negative 6 comma negative 6 and on the right side of this interval we will have the point 0 in the x, but still negative 6 in the y. So endpoints here are very important. In fact, this is what's going to help us. So the left endpoint of this constant function would be x value negative 6, y value negative 6. So let's find negative 6, negative 6, which is right here. And then the um, rightmost endpoint is going to be 0 negative 6 so there's our line there and also it looks like we are strictly greater than and strictly less than all that means is we are not including our endpoints so let's make those open circles okay and then the second function in our piecewise function says invoke the function 3x minus 8 but only in the interval from 0 to 4 and non-inclusive so our leftmost endpoint here would be well if we plug in 0 for x we would get, um, let's see, well, the x coordinate would be 0 because it tells us right there, and the y coordinate would be 3 times 0 minus 8, which in this case, there we go, which in this case is equal to 0 minus 8, negative 8. Okay, so there's the leftmost endpoint. The rightmost endpoint, now let's plug in 4 for x. So the rightmost endpoint, we have x is equal to 4, because it tells us right there, x is 4. would go from 4, let's plug it in, 3 times 4 minus 8. Let's see, that's 12 minus 8. We better know that. Uh, oops, sorry, 12 minus 8. I jumped the gun there. 12 minus 8, better known as 4. Okay, so our rightmost endpoint then would be the point 4, comma 4. So what I'm doing here is I'm figuring out, oh, my leftmost endpoint for that function and my rightmost endpoint for the function. And since these are all linears or lines, I'm just taking my two endpoints and I'm forming a line between them. The same thing I'm about to do here. So my leftmost endpoint here is 0, negative 8. And my rightmost endpoint is 4, 4, which is here. Okay. And this is a strict inequality, and that's a strict inequality. All that means is we don't include the endpoints, and what that means graphically is it means open circles. So there we go. So this is the piecewise function represented from these two equations. So let's try another one. Let's try a new problem. All right, what about these guys? So again, graph this piecewise function. So I'm going to do the same thing. I want to test the endpoints. So the leftmost endpoint here is going to be, it looks like, at negative 5 for x. But what about for y? How do I figure out what the y value is? Well, I plug it in. Let's see, negative 5. It's going to be negative negative 5 minus 6. This is equal to positive 5 minus 6, better known as negative 1. Okay, rightmost endpoint, so we got the leftmost endpoint. Rightmost endpoint here, I'm going to plug in negative 1 for x now. And let's see where we end up on the y. Well, we have negative, negative 1, and then minus 6. Let's see, negative, negative, so positive 1 minus 6. This is better known as negative 5. Okay, left endpoint and right endpoint checked off for that function. 
Let's see, so left endpoint is negative 5, negative 1. Negative 5, negative 1, which is here. And the right endpoint is negative 1, negative 5. So it's negative 1, negative 5. Okay. And it looks like, again, these inequalities are strict, which means kind of what they want open circles, which means we don't actually get to those points. Okay. So that was the top function. The bottom function, it looks like we want to go 2x minus 4, but we only want it from negative 1 to 6. So let's plug in our leftmost endpoint. So negative 1, but we go into what for y, so let's plug it in. Be 2 times negative 1 minus 4. That's negative 2 minus 4. That's negative 8. So negative 1, negative 8. Okay, leftmost endpoint here. The rightmost endpoint, which is 6. So this is going to go into the point 6, comma. I don't know. Let's plug in 6 for x. 2 times 6 minus 4. I'm just plugging in 6 for x for this particular function. That's 12 minus 4, positive 8. Okay, so this function is going to go from negative 1, negative 8. So negative 1, negative 8, okay. 2, let's see, this is moving this one out, okay. Negative 1, negative 8 to 6, comma 8. Let's see, 6, comma 8, which is here. Okay, let's move. There we go. Now our check marks line up. Okay, and 6, comma 8, check that off. Okay, these are both strict, so I need to take these endpoints all the way out. Get out of there. There we go. Okay. This would be the piecewise function for these equations here. So the process here is basically check your endpoints. So check your leftmost endpoint. Check your rightmost endpoint. Draw a line between those. It's an open circle if it's a strict inequality. In other words, not an or equal to. And then same thing here. We checked our leftmost endpoint by plugging it in. The leftmost endpoint. We checked our rightmost endpoint by plugging it in. Graphing it here. Graph the two points, draw a line between them. Let's see another one. And this will be the last one. Here we go. All right, graph the following function for the axes provided. Okay, same thing. For the top function, I'm going to check my leftmost endpoint. So when x is negative 6, what is my y? Well, it's going to be negative, negative 6. I'm just plugging this in for x. Minus 7, these two will make a positive 6, minus 7, 6 minus 7 is negative 1. So leftmost endpoint. Rightmost endpoint, I'm going to plug in negative 2 for x. So my rightmost endpoint will be negative 2, comma, I don't know, let's plug in negative 2 and see where we go. Negative 2, negative, minus 7, these will be positive 2, minus 7, that'll get us to negative 5. Okay. Uh, that endpoint. Okay, let's graph these guys. Okay, so we go from the point negative 6, negative 1 to the point negative 2, negative 5. Okay, negative 6, negative 1 is here. And negative 2, negative 5 is here. Okay, it looks like, again, strict inequalities. So we're going to open those circles up. Okay. Top equation done. Bottom equation. We need the function negative x minus 3 on the interval from negative 2 to 4. So let's check the left end point. So this function goes from negative 2 comma, I don't know, let's plug it in. Negative, negative 2 minus 3. Let's see that's positive 2 minus 3, that's negative 1. Okay, check the left end point. Right end point, x equals 4. So x equals 4, comma, let's plug in x, negative 4 minus 3, so negative 4 minus 3, that's negative 7. Okay, so our function is going to go from the point negative 2, negative 1, so negative 2, negative 1, which is here, to 4, negative 7, so 4 is here, negative, negative 7, 
All right, right there. And let's look at our inequality. Strict, strict. So I got a punch hole in it. Punch a hole. Punch a hole. And we're good. Okay, notice these are parallel lines. Why are they parallel lines? Well, the slope of my two lines are the same. They're both negative one, so parallel lines, and that's exactly why. Let me put a check here because we did that endpoint as well. All right, um, so again, these were the examples that go along with the Delta Math assignment labeled graphing piecewise functions level one. Hope that helped. As always, if you have a question, please just ask.